Hey everybody, Joy here. It is, right now, 10 after 4 on Monday, January 31, 2022. And this is a new introduction to the video you're about to watch. I've been making this video since the 27th. So that's 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That's five days. There was over 35 clips for me to pull together and try to make some sense <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's so confusing to me. I'm like, how on earth am I gonna understand it? So let me tell you what this video is. I show you, number one, a box that I get from Edit a Sitar. Then I show you what I'm gonna do with the fabric that's in the box. And so I start out showing you how I cut out the appliques with my scan and cut. And it's long, it's lengthy, and it's detailed. I'm not sure if you can see the screen on the scan and cut perfectly. I cannot figure out how to do that yet. I may have to buy a new camera one of these days. But um, I start out showing you exactly how I cut out the hearts on the scan and cut. I explain a lot to you on the scan and cut. And I tell you about the mat that I use, which is not what you're going to learn on the internet. It's my way of cutting out fabric. I saw one lady on the internet do it that way, and she's exactly totally right. And oh, I feel so bad. I don't remember where her name is, and I can't find her. I'm looking for something I want to show you. If you're like, what's the matter with your eyes? I get asked a lot of questions. <laughs> and one of the questions was, how do you clean your mat, your scan and cut mat? So I'm going to show you. This is a product I use. I have these in every bathroom. And I have super, super sensitive skin from head to toe, so I have to have the non-everything kind of wipe. And so they're called Equate Everyday Clean Wipes Fragrance-Free Aloe and Vitamin E. That's the kind I use. Do you have to use this kind of wipe? I'm sure you don't. I doubt that anybody in the whole wide world even has this kind of wipe but me because I have to have super sensitive everything. But they work really, really good. When you get through using your mats, your scan and cut mats, you want to wipe them really good with one of these wipes. And the thing about it is it doesn't wipe the sticky off. It makes the sticky come back sticky again. I don't know how it works. Somebody said, do your wipes have alcohol? No, obviously mine don't have anything except aloe and vitamin E. I think the mats actually like the aloe and the vitamin E. <laughs> So I start out showing you all about the scan and cut, showing you the mat, showing you how I do it, and with the fabric, how I do the fabric. Main, main point is I don't use a fabric mat. I don't need a fabric mat. I wish I didn't even have to buy one to start with. <laughs> but I was told you had to have a fabric mat for fabric. You do not. So I won't go into detail about that. Then I get all the hearts cut out. Then I have to get the hearts on the quilt, just like I had to get these chickens on the quilt. So I show you exactly how I do that. How I put the appliques on and how I sew around them with my sewing machine. And I show you that in great detail as well. Then I show you at the end the quilt all made up and I'm sure you're going to go Bruh! straight to the end and look at it. That's what I do. <laughs> it's okay, so it's a bunch of hearts. <laughs> So this is an hour-long video. If you get so bored, you're falling asleep, just go forward a little bit, forward a little bit. I don't know how to do chapters yet, and I don't even know what I would chapter it up to be a chapter of, so I'm not into that yet, in so far as my YouTube videos, but I know a lot of people are. So, just remember, I start out showing you the fabric, then I cut the fabric, then I applique the fabric, and then I get the quilt made, and I show you the whole, whole thing right here in this very video. This is from Laundry Basket Quilts, Edita Sitar. Oh, what an amazing lady. Oh, and look. A stress reliever. All right. Okay, here it is. Whatever I bought was $108. And I don't even know what it was. Oh, it looks like it's the half yard bundle. It's only this. Remember I told you I wanted to make her heart quilt. And so these are the fabrics that you make 
the Valentine quilt with, which is kind of cool because now I can play with it. I can go ahead and start it and have it done by Valentine's Day. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Guess what I just discovered? <laughs> My lightning fast mode's working fast today. This isn't just all this. You unfold it, <laughs> and lo and behold, there's one, two, three fabrics there. Yes, so that's three. I thought, my gosh, there's only two reds. Need more than two reds. And so then there's one, two, ooh, there's four in this one, three, four. Oh, how pretty are those? Don't you want to make a Valentine quilt? Ooh, I wanted the neutrals. It's hard to come by pretty neutrals, and Edita has the prettiest ones. I don't care how many there are. Hers are the prettiest. Hers are the prettiest. There's a lot of fabric here, you guys. One, two, three more neutrals. I think this is called the Sweetheart Bundle or something. Now, here's pinks. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. The fabric is so much prettier in person. It just is. Yvonne, are you seeing this? Have you ordered this yet? <laughs> yes. We must make everything the same. How about you, Helga? Do you have any of this sweetheart package? Oh, it's beautiful. Polka dots. Oh, I would have bought it just for the polka dots. I <laughs> love polka dots. These are the softest most high quality cottons there are out there. They are beautiful. This is going to be the prettiest quilt. The quilts never photograph as pretty as they are in real life. They just don't. I have gone to quilt shows and just just stood there in awe and amazement of these quilts and then I'd come home and look at the pictures I took of them and I thought well, you can't even see this, and you can't even see that, and this had this over there, and this over there, and you can't even tell it. It's just a lot different in person. Look at these gorgeous ones. Yes. I'm ready. <laughs> Here's my sweetheart pattern. You've got to have 10 by 10 squares, and then I'm going to use this big heart that is... The big heart is seven wide by seven. It's seven by seven, believe it or not. How can a heart be seven by seven? I don't know, but this one is. Seven by seven. We're all going to heaven. All right, so I have to figure out how to just get that big heart on a piece of paper so I can scan it with my scan and cut. Then I can cut 10 inch squares of this and put them down on my mat. You want to watch? You want to? Are you going to do it right now? Why not? Stay with me. I have not had good experience showing people things on my computer monitor. I know it can be done because people do it all the time. So I'm going to try it. I've been just taking photos and I thought, well, I need to do more than a photo of this part. So here's what I've done. Number one, I've written down what I've done. <laughs> First of all, I scanned it with my printer software, Epson Scan. I'll show you a picture of that. So I have it scanned. It's in the scan and cut file. Next, I went to Adobe Photoshop, which is what this is. This is Adobe Photoshop. It's version 14 or 18 or 21 or something. I have so many versions of it. I might as well have bought the, the full, full blown Photoshop. <laughs> so I'm in Photoshop. So here's the picture at an ascent. I don't want those two little hearts and I don't want all this writing. I just want that big heart. So I am going to erase everything in that picture that I don't want then I'm going to make it high resolution. Then I'm going to print it out 100% of its size with just 
that one heart. Then I can take that one heart and go scan it. That's why it's a scan and cut. People say, is scan and cut the same as the cricket or the silhouette? No. And the number one reason, the only reason I know of, is because the scan and cut will scan. Now I have had it scan some pictures in the past. Um, I just made a sleep shirt recently that had the head of a sleeping girl on it. And I had to get that picture in very dark resolution or the scan and cut couldn't even pick it up. It just picked up bits and pieces of it. It was a mess. I did that for hours and hours. Finally got it to do it right. So that's why I'm going to start out with a high quality picture of this heart to start with, okay? I don't know if you all have Photoshop. You might have something else like it. If you don't have any way to do what I'm doing now, I would suggest you make a copy and you cut everything out that you don't want and then print it on your printer and hope and pray that it doesn't make a copy of all the parts you cut out with just big white blobs with squares around them. <laughs> that can happen too, but the scan and cut can actually remove some ghost lines. I think that's what they call them. Okay? so. I'm going to assume you can see this and hopefully you can't see me. I'm going to come over here to get the eraser and I'm going to make it very big. See that dot there getting very big? You do that with the, um, the bracket key. You know the one that's straight like a staple? Um, I'm using the bracket key to make it bigger. Now I'm just going to go through here and erase these lines. Now look at that. Now look at that. Can you get any easier than that? No. Now I have one heart instead of three. Now those other two hearts are for other projects. So I'm not, I don't ever use my original that came with my pattern or that came when I printed out the tutorial. I don't ever use that. I always leave it alone and then I work with copies. Okay, so now we want to delete all of this writing there we go. Delete all that. Ooh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete. Delete. Now what I want to do is get rid of all the part of this that I don't need. So I'm just going to mark the heart itself with the crop, the crop tool. That's the crop tool with no restriction. See, I don't need all that bottom part, so why have it? I'm just gonna scan the heart. Before I print it, I'm going to turn it so it's the right, it doesn't really matter, but it's a heart and I want it straight up and down. <laughs> so now I'm going to print it and I'm gonna make sure it's printing in high resolution, print. So then your print box will come up so here where it says change settings, I'm printing it on plain white paper, 8.5 by 11. I'm going to go to advanced settings, and I have it on text right now. I don't want it to print out in the quality of text because that's poor quality. I mean, it's okay for text, but for a, a picture it's not. I want it to be dark and bright and understandable. <laughs> so I'm going to choose best. It says best photo, okay. Okay, so now I am going to print that and we'll see how dark it comes out, okay? I printed it before I did this. I'll show you the difference. So let's show the two different resolutions. Here it is as it came. Editors print out. Here it is, my new way of just one heart and much darker lines. Can you tell? I think you can. So now I'm going to take it in there to the scan and cut and scan it. You want me to take you there? I'll take you along. Hold on. <laughs> so here we are in the scan and cut department. <laughs> and you have to have a certain mat for scanning. Now these probably come shorter, but I would suggest you get the longer one because you can tell the scan and cut to just scan this much or just scan this much or just scan the whole thing. So, I'm showing you here the girl I put on my sleep shirt. 
she's the one that I had to do over and over and over and I couldn't figure out what was wrong and finally you know my lightning fast mine it always clicks in eventually this is how dark I had to print her so the scan and cut could pick her up and I love that shirt what does it say he will give you sweet sleep it was a scripture out of the Bible it was so good so what I'm gonna do is take that heart the thing about it is I didn't bring the heart <laughs> It helps if you remember to bring your image. <laughs> There's a little tip for you. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to scan it into, you know, I don't know, there might be a heart shape in there, but it won't be the same as Edita's. I want it to be the exact, exact one. So, you take this and first of all, you have to tell it there's a mat here, so you push the little middle button that says mat and it sucks it in a little bit. See, it's just going in a little bit and then it's coming back out a little bit. So now it knows that this thing, this mat, it knows the mat is here now. So now we have to tell it what to do with the mat. So let me find my pokey thing. So you get your little poker and you tell it you want to scan. And I want to scan to cut data. It says direct cut. No, I don't want it to cut anything yet because I don't even have the material in here. And I don't want to scan it to a USB. I want to scan it to this scan and cut. So I'm going to say scan to cut data. Now you can tell it the area, the size of the area. Let me get something that has a measuring facility to it. So it's only going to scan this down to 12 inches and then it's going to quit. So I'm going to hit start. you see it going in? It's scanning now. It's coming back out. Now this is when we'll find out if it was a good enough copy or not. It came out great. So you can choose this little graph right here that goes from white to gray to dark gray to black. You can choose that and you can make that an even better picture. Yes you can. See? Now it will make it a very good view and I can preview it and it's perfect and it's beautiful and so you're looking at it thinking well do you want to put all your material right there at the top and just cut one at a time no I will figure out how many seven by sevens I can get on the large mat I have a large mat like this that I'm going to put my material on with the steam -a seam on the back of it and uh, or no I'm going to use the heat and bond light because you know, you want to use heat and bond light my Becky taught me that heat and bond light with the scan and cut and then I'm going to put my fabric down as many as it will let me uh, seven by sevens so I've got a 12 inch by 24 inch area to cut seven by seven hearts and so seven and seven is 14 so obviously I'm only going to be able to get one across this way but how many sevens are in 24? three of them so I'll be able to cut three different fabrics per mat that I put in here. I don't know if it saved it or not. Oh yes, this is what you do. So I clicked OK there and now it's giving me three choices of where to save this. I want to save it here in the computer of the Scan and Cut. The Scan and Cut's a computer, you know. And I want to save it right here in this. Saved in the machine's memory as number 94. Okay? So perfection, that is what I need. And so I will send this out. And there it is. And so I'm all done with the scan part. So I just wanted to show you what the scan feature of a scan and cut does. If you have the Cricut or the Silhouette, I'm assuming, I do not know, but I'm assuming you would do all of this ahead of time with, with one of their computer softwares their software programs that would come with their machine. That's all I can figure out. Okay? I'll be back when I get ready to cut out hearts. Ah! All right, we're going to cut out our first three hearts. Are you excited? Of course you are. Ah! Make it with me. Make it with me. This is a PDF that I downloaded. I think it's 12 bucks, but so what? Now, here's the next thing. 
I have seen Becky at Power Tools with Thread and I have seen other people all say to use your fabric mat for this. Use your fabric mat and put the fabric down on the sticky part. I tried that. It was horrible. It made the biggest mess in the whole wide world. So I saw some lady, I wish I knew who she was and where she was, I'd give her credit. Some little YouTube and she said, use the standard mat and put the paper down. Put the paper down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm putting the paper down. I'm going to line it up here on the nine line, I think. It should line up all three. I'm putting the paper down. Now, before you use your mat, you always take the plastic off. The plastic is just for when you're storing it. Take the plastic off and clean it. I clean mine with wipes. You use wipes. My wipes are anti-everything. <laughs> I buy them from Walmart. They come in great big bags. They're real cheap and they're called Equate. Daily Daily wipes or something, they're fabulous. And they work great for cleaning up these mats. Okay, so see, I'm sticking the paper down. The paper sticks so much better than the fabric. Look at that, it's already down. Wonderful. Now the reasoning was to put the fabric side down because you might never be able to get the paper back up. I have had no trouble getting the paper off at all. It just comes right off because it's not the fabric mat. Don't do this on the fabric mat. The fabric mat is much stickier. The standard mat is less stickier. So use your standard mat. Mine's purple. You use it for vinyl. Well, I also use it for fabric now. So there's my three squares. I'm going to go run this through the machine and I'm going to cut three hearts you want to watch. <laughs> okay, we're back at the scan and cut table. While this is cutting, your machine will go off if you walk away from it for very long. So just turn it back on. Roly poly everything. You want it to be stuck good. You get one of these roly polies with your machine. If you don't, buy one. All right, so that is stuck real good. Now, another thing you can do is you can put scotch tape on it to hold it down to make sure it doesn't lift, but I'm going to try it without the scotch tape right now. So, here we go. We're done. Okay, get rid of that and just go back. Go back to nothing. Okay, delete everything. Start over. Go to home. Okay? We're starting everything new on the scanning cut because we saved our heart. Remember, we saved our heart. All right, so put this in here like this and push your mat button. There's a house button, there's a mat button, and there's the two dashes down here. And I figured out if you push that, it stops. It just says, we are stopping cutting. I'm like, good. <laughs> yeah, if you start to cut and your fabric starts to get stuck on the blade or starts to scrunch up or starts to come off, stop. Hit the two lines. All right, let's feed the mat in. Now we're going to scan the mat so the computer knows where that material is because we're going to place the hearts exactly, exactly on those three pieces of 8 by 8 material. So we're going to retrieve data, which means you're going to find your design. And we're going to push hard enough to make the thing work. So I'm using my finger now. I lost my little poker. It's probably in there. And we're going to come down here to number 92 or whatever it was. It's way down at the bottom. Right there's my heart. Ta-da! My heart! My heart belongs to Jesus. Okay. I need a little pokey thing. I'll have to go get it. Alright, so now what I want to do is say, okay, yes, that's what I want to cut. Now I'm going to push here. Right here, it's showing me, okay, you picked this heart. Is that what you want to cut? Yes. But, I want to choose the mat. Not this mat. Right here, there's a square with some little pieces of cut up stuff in it. Here is a mat. You want to click the mat. 
So I click the mat, and now what it's going to do is scan this entire mat. Yeah, it knows it. It knows it's 12 by 24. Now hold it in the back, or it'll, it'll just hang down, and I, don't, I think your fabric would loosen up if you did that. So I just hold mine back here. Now what it's going to do, it's going to show me what it just saw. It's, see? See there? Isn't that awesome? I think they should have made this neon green and the size of a toothbrush. <laughs>
Oh, look at that. Yes, there's the triangle, but the heat and bond is still there. It did not cut through the heat and bond. I don't know, I can still use it. It's got the sticky stuff on the back. So do I care if it cuts through the heat and bond? I don't think so. Why should I care about that? Our three hearts ready to iron on. One, two, three hearts. One, two, three. I don't know how many more I need, but it's awesome. I've already got the heart in here now, so all I have to do is line up the hearts. Now, you want to see how easy that comes off of that mat. Those of you who think you have to use a fabric mat or else, let's see. I could be wrong. I've been wrong several times in my life. I've been wrong a bunch of times. Look at this. See? See that paper? That paper came off super, super easy. But this is still the heat and bond. This heart right here. There is a heart of the heat and bond still here. Let's see if we can get it up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See there? You have to scrape it a little bit. But oh my goodness, how awesome it looks. It's just gone. It's just gone. If you could start at a point. So it did cut around. It did cut around the paper. But the paper stayed behind. So I'm going to write down the numbers I used for this. So I can remember in the future. That I used two and two. And it was on one thickness on the side instead of two thicknesses. And it was paper side down. I think I've already written this down to tell you the truth. But. Just in case, write down what you do. When you have a successful experiment, write down, look at this. Now see here, that all came off in one piece because I started at the point. Look, there's no paper left on here. There's none. And I did not have to put the fabric side down, my friends. So, I don't care what I've been told by my friends or by anybody else. This is the way I'm going to do it. And I'll show you what that product is I use to clean my board. If you'll bear with me. Okay, so there's the heart. The third heart stayed behind. Your tape comes right up. See, there's the tape. This comes right up. And then there's my third heart. See that heart there? Watch this. Ta-da! I just cut out my second three hearts. I want to show you something else you can do with your scan and cut. You don't have to cut the hearts out like this. You can look at your fabric and see, oh, I wish my hearts were diagonal on this, or I wish my hearts were sideways on this, or I wish my, my heart was upside down because those roses are all going to be going upside down. So let me show you. This one I did sideways. See, here's the point here. I did that sideways so my flowers would come down from the top center of the heart. See? And then this one, I think I did just the normal way, but I put the stripes on here horizontal, even though on the fabric I think they're um, vertical. So this one gets horizontal stripes. And I think that this is also used for a background, so when I use it for a background, I'll use it vertical, and then it won't look like it's the same fabric. Hmm, maybe. And then this one, I had my roses going the wrong way, so I did it upside down. See here? Upside down. <laughs> so how cool is that? See my board? You can see that my hearts went three different directions. I don't know, I just love so much about applique. <laughs> it's the way this machine cuts it out for you. Alright, I'll be back. So this is the next morning. 
Let me put you on wide. This is the next morning, and I just want you to see I've got all my hearts cut out. It was so easy. I've got all my hearts cut out. I actually ended up with one extra, so I'm going to put it on a shirt. <laughs> and there's the fabrics that came with the sweetheart fabric, but I have added fabrics of my own. Not only that, I found a layer cake of Edita Sitars. This layer cake right here. Here's the sign. And it's called Brave Heart. And it had a lot of pinks and burgundies in it. So I pulled some of those out to use those for backgrounds and hearts. So mine's not going to look just like hers. <laughs> and then I also pulled out a couple of my fabrics that I love that had red and pink in them. So I'm going to show you how I center that heart on that 10 inch square. You need a 10 inch square for the back. And some of them have come from this layer cake. There's all the half yard. There's all the half yard fabrics that came. And you can see I've got some 10 inch squares up there. So those are all the fabrics that are going to be backgrounds. Those I'll have to cut the 10 inch squares out of, but that's not a problem. And then I took what I could out of here. So let me show you, because I, I had to scratch my head and think a little bit before I could figure out how to center that heart. So let me show you what my lightning fast mind figured out. <laughs> Stay with me. So what you want to do is you want to fold your heart in half. It's easy to tell where the center is from the point at the top and the point at the bottom. That's not a problem, but where's the center from the top to the bottom? And how do you fold a heart in half and make sure your point's in the right place? There's nothing here to line it up to. So this is what I do. I find a line on my table. Pick a line, any line. Put the center on the center line line the top of the heart up on a straight line any line doesn't matter so now you know that you know now that this point right here is the top of the heart that point right here so what i do is i fold the point up to there and be sure you have this center line lined up with the center of the heart or you'll be folding it up crooked Put that up there to that line and then crease. Just put a little crease. This is what I've been doing. Just put a little crease over there. And so now I know where the center is both ways. Now, of course, on the 10 inch square, I just take it to the ironing board and I fold it in half and in half. So it's really super easy. Now look at your little design. Make sure your background, if there's a direction, make sure your background is going straight up and down so it's not all crooked and crazy. This is baskets, little baskets of editors. And this is my heart. And so you're going to put the point on the point at the bottom. Put the you're going to put the point on the center fold on the bottom. You're going to put this inside point to the center fold on the top. Then you're going to line up your little crease here, which is right there and right there. So you've got your crease on a fold, your crease on a fold, your point on a fold, and your point on a fold. Now if you don't trust yourself, like I never trust myself, <laughs> take a gauge, take a gauge, put it on an inch and a half because I know that's my distance, and just make sure inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. So I'm just going to iron these hearts onto these background squares. Then I'm going to figure out where in my quilt I want all the different blocks. And then I'm going to sew the blocks together. Now I do have to sew the, um, sew the hearts. And I'll probably um, sew the hearts. You want me to show you how I applique? I've shown you that a whole bunch of times. But I'll show you how I'm going to applique this heart down. But right now, I'm just going to press it down with a steam seam. Because every heart has steam seam on the back, remember? I tend to use my quilts as bulletin boards. <laughs> they don't work good at all for holding up quilt blocks. So you have to put pins in them. And so you remember my fall star quilt, I ended up with, goodness, a dozen or more <laughs> extra blocks. Well, I ended up with three extra blocks today. I could make a quilt so much faster if I would just do it the first time and accept it that way. But I don't. <laughs> 
I think, oh, I need a light one. Oh, I need a dark one. Oh, I need a white one. Oh, I need a this. Oh, I need a that. Good Sunday morning, my friends. This is continuation of whatever you've been watching, but it's Sunday morning now, January 30, 2022. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I got so much stuff out on my tables, good heavens. All right, so here's the deal, Neil. You've seen me making the hearts. It was so easy with the scan and cut to cut out all those hearts. It is not easy cutting out a heart. I don't care. How good your scissors are or whatever you've got a out outer an outy point and an any point in a heart but it is a great shape for me to show you how to applique a lot of people have asked me over the years show us how you applique now a lot of times when i applique a shape down i have to put a stabilizer sheet behind it i'm not having to do that now why number one because I've got two pieces of fabric together. Number two, the heart has stabilizer behind it already because it has heat and bond light on it. So it's the heart, the heat and bond, and the piece of fabric, the 10 inch square underneath it. And I'm sewing around it just beautifully with no stabilizer. Awesome. So sometimes, however, you will need a stabilizer, okay? I can't explain what the difference is, except that I can explain this. If when you're sewing around a shape, and it's going like this, increasing and making a, a tuck, a crunch, a wrinkle, you need a stabilizer. But I'm not having any trouble with these hearts. And I can go around one of those hearts from start to finish in less than a minute and a half. But then again, you can sew around an applique shape using different kinds of stitches. I am using a loose zigzag. Lots of times I applique with a satin stitch, which is real, 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 real close together. A lot of times, I'll use a thread that's a little bit darker or the same color as, say, the heart, the square, the circle, the owl, the monkey, the whatever. So, when I sew all the way around it with the satin stitch, it looks like it's outlined, and it makes it stand forward more. But in this case, the hearts stand forward enough on their own, so I'm sewing them down with invisible thread. And... Whatever brand I'm using, which I think is Signature, hold on. What are you? Mono Poly. I'm using Mono Poly by Superior Threads. Awesome. It has not broken one single solitary time. Now, it takes the eyes of an eagle to see it and get it through the needle. If you'll take the tip of it, put it down on a piece of paper, and color over the tip of it with a... Uh, permanent marker you'll be able to see it and get it through the needle or put on three or four pair of glasses that helps too <laughs> so I wanted to tell you getting ready you don't want to use your original applique piece your original quilt block don't start there start on a scrap what you want to do is get your machine perfectly set up for the project you're fixing to do and you want to practice Tension. Tension is so important. It took me three and a half hearts before I got the tension perfect. How should your tension be? I'm using a clear nylon thread on top and a beige thread on the back. On the top, what is my paper? I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> on the top, going around the heart, you should not be able to see any of the bobbin thread. If any of the bobbin thread is coming up, like little dots here and there, your tension's wrong. Stop the train, take out your bobbin case, get your little screwdriver, and do a quarter turn on that bobbin case. Pop it back in, and go again. If it's still popping up on top, stop again, pull out your bobbin case. I did this three times. I probably, before I was done, had turned that little screw completely the whole way around one time 
And you would think, but that's not the sewing machine store said I should never do that. I should never do it. It's got to be a certain, certain way and only they can do it. Baloney. Baloney, baloney. You have to learn to not be afraid to tighten your bobbins. <laughs> you have to learn to be fearless in tension. Perfection. I know I used to be a super scaredy cat too, but now I'm old and I've been through a lot of applications. <laughs> I'm not afraid of that bottom case anymore. <laughs> so I tighten it. It is tight. I'll pull it out. When I get the camera real up close, I'll take it out and I'll show you how tight it is. You won't believe it. But the clear thread on the top is all clear. There's no little dots coming up from the beige on the bottom. Perfect. And so what, what, what is that paper? Why does she have that paper? I get corrected all the time. Somebody corrected me on Shine last Sunday that I've got to quit doing things in the background when Jerry's talking. You know, the microphone on these little cameras, it is unbelievable. I was clear in the laundry room, which is three rooms away from where Jerry was talking to y'all, and the camera still picked it up. So I guess I'm just gonna have to go over to the RV and stay over there when Jerry's doing his Sunday school today. <laughs> So my paper, here it is, my paper. When you find perfection, write it down. Y'all remember my kitty quilt where I'm appliqueing kitties? The eyeballs, the eyeballs were, they're teeny tiny itty bitty and I was going around them with a black zigzag. And I did it two, three, four, five times. And I thought, ooh, ick, ooh, ick, ooh, ick. And I was practicing on little dots on something else, not the original. And I finally figured out the perfect width of the zigzag to go around eyeball. So I made this note. It says eyes, kitty quilt eyes, one and a half width on the zigzag. Make a note. So I'm getting that kitty quilt out as soon as these hearts are done. <laughs> I told Viv it would probably be done in spring. I didn't say which year. <laughs> so this is the hearts. On the width of the zigzag, two and a half is my perfect width. On the length of the zigzag, and it's not a satin stitch. A satin stitch would be no number. The length of my zigzag is one and a half. My needle position is in the center on number three. So I keep this because I have got... 30? Yeah, I've got 30 hearts to do. And I may do five today and five tomorrow and five three weeks from now. And I want them to all be the same. And I don't want to have to start over every time I sit down with them. Plus, I write down what machine. You know, I have lots and lots of machines. And it makes a difference what machine you're on. And so if I go to a different machine, I'm going to have to start all over on my settings. So, write them down. I'm going to write B. 11.30. B11.30 right there. So now I know which machine I used and what settings I used. Now, if I go to that machine to do something, like if I decide, oh, I'm going to quit doing these hearts and I'm going to do the kitties, I'm going to have to change that bobbin because I'm not using clear thread for the kitties. So I'm going to have to start all over. So when I go back to the hearts again, I will have my note card to remind me exactly what settings I used. Okay? I hope that helps all of you. Now, it is really hard for me to do super, super close up for you. Number one, my hands, you know, I've got to hold the heart and I've got to move it around. And so you can see my left hand, you can see my right hand. I've tried forward, backward, right, left. <laughs> but I'm going to zoom the camera in super, 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 super close. And hopefully you'll be able to see really good how I go around these hearts. I'm going to start not on a point. Never start on a point with a long arm, with a sewing machine, never start on the point. So I'm going to start over here on the side of the top hump of this heart. I'm going to go all the way down to this point, and then up here, and then around to this point, and around here, and down. The only two places you're going to have to slow down and pay attention really, 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 really close is when you get to this point and this point. The points are the problem. The sermon this morning, promise, problem, provision, okay? I promise you I'm going to get around this heart. The problem's going to be the points. <laughs> okay, now I can't see the thread, so get some glasses. Like I said, 
make sure you can see really, 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 really good. You are using invisible thread. The problem with invisible thread is it's invisible. If you have a Bernina, you've got your knee lever that lifts your foot. See, my hands are both here. I'm not using them to lift anything. That's what I love about a Bernina. And yes, they have put that feature in other sewing machines now, but it's not the same. Okay, I'm going to start with straight stitch, a really close straight stitch to make sure that thread is locked. So I'm on number one straight stitch. I'm going to go to number two zigzag, which remembers what I'm using. Now I'm going to hand, hand roll the wheel. Why? Because I want to make sure the needle lands where I want it to land. Because this is much wider than the stitch I'm going to use. And the needle might land on the outside of my zig. It might land on the inside of my zag. You've got a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. It's very, very important that you know if you're starting on the zig or the zag. I hope that makes sense. So I have lined it up so my zig is on the inside. Then I'm going to take one stitch and make sure it's going to land right on the outside edge of that red heart. And I want you to see how fast I can go around this heart. What am I looking at? I am looking right here where the red meets the white. That's my road. Where the red meets the white, that's my road. And I want the zag, which is the outside stitch, I want the zag to touch right outside that red road. Now the zag I'm on right now is a little bit too far outside it, so I'm just going to move back in a little bit. All right, now. When you're sewing, you can see the needle go in. Your eye can just see it. And so the needle, you're going to watch the needle and make sure it's right here on the edge of this red road. See how fast I can go? Yeah. All right, now I'm slowing way, 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 way down. Let me see. Can you see that point up close? I think you can. So now I'm going to go real slow. What I would love is if the zag, now remember, the zig is the inside, the zag is the outside. Enjoy vocabulary, okay? What I want is for the zag to end up right at the tip of that heart, but it usually doesn't. So what I do is I lift the needle up and I move the little point and I Roll the needle down right to the very tippy tip 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 of that point. Then I turn. So now I'm positive that that point is going to be completely covered. Okay? So now we're going to come up this side. Remember, we don't have a problem until we get to the points. Now, what about going around the curves? Going around the curves is tricky. I learned to stop, turn, stop, turn, stop, turn, stop, turn. And you do need to do that, but you don't need to do it constantly. If it's a nice, wide, easy curve, sometimes you don't even have to stop and turn. Try to keep my hands out of the way. See, here I go. Now look, do you see this hand right here? See these fingers right here? My left hand. I'm turning. I'm using them to gently turn as I go around this curve. That's what I'm doing. I'm just using them to gently turn. I'm holding my other hand here just away down here at this corner. Give it a little bit of help. See? Between the two hands. See this one's coming around here now. I'm using them both really. I'm slowing down. Now see I'm coming to the inside point now. Now you never know where you're going to end up there. So I'm just going to stop. Wherever it ends up, I'm going to stop because I'm going to move my needle if I have to. Because I want to make sure that my next stitch, now see, that next stitch is going to be a zig. I need my next stitch to be a zag. So I'm going to back up to the zig of the last stitch or a little bit behind it because I want to make sure this part, this point is covered too, okay? So I've hand stitched to make sure, sure, sure. And I'm sure, sure, sure. So here I go. Now I'm going to follow this curve. Try to keep my hands out of the way. 
I know you can't see the thread, but I'll show you up close. And here I am coming up to where I started. Now I'm going to go back to single stitch, and I'm going to stitch three or four or five stitches in a row, and then stop. Then I'm going to pull this out. If you have a machine that cuts the thread, don't use it. You really need to start with two long threads that you can hold with your fingers. Okay? So you can see how fast that went. So there's the closest up I can get of the back side of that heart. You can see there's no wrinkles, no pleats, no crimps, no tucks. It's as flat as it can be. And when I turn it over, you can see that absolutely no beige thread comes up. No beige thread anywhere. On the very first two, three I started, I had issues with that. These are just holes. Those are the holes you can see when you're sewing, see? And so as you're watching the needle go in making those holes, see how, I am, how close I am to the road? See, isn't that wonderful? And there is the upper point where I turned and made sure that I caught that point. And then around and around and around and around to where I started and tied off. And then down here to the bottom point. And you can see how my thread kind of crosses over there a little bit on that point. But that's what I wanted it to do. I wanted to make sure I got that point tied down. Let's look at the back. There's the back. I'll try to hold, hold the camera still so it will focus. See how my stitches kind of cross over funky there? But see how I have a stitch at the very, 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 very point. That's the idea. Why don't I use the blanket stitch? Because I don't like the blanket stitch. I don't like it. Because, you know, the idea of the blanket stitch is for it to show. But I never like the way the blanket stitch goes around the point. The outer point or the inner point. I find that impossible. Very hard to do this. There's that point on the top and you can see how I kind of made a little triangle there to make sure it's completely. See how the hole is? Right at the tip of the point. I wonder what she means by tight on the bobbin. <laughs> now, when the store does the bobbin for you, when you hold it up like this, the bobbin will fall the way the store does it. This isn't going to fall ever. <laughs> You could hang this on the Christmas tree and store it in the attic and it's never going to fall. Because it has to be tight. It has to be tight enough to pull the top thread down under. Now if your top thread and your bottom thread are the same color, it doesn't matter so much. But when they're different, it matters a bunch. So I'm going to show you how tight this is. Now I'm pulling gently. Nothing's coming. I'm pulling gently. Now I'm pulling harder and it's coming slowly. I can almost hear it grinding. See? I'm pulling it. And that's as fast as it's going. It does not fall. So, that's how I like my bobbin to be. Tight. I'm going to show you one more heart. Just so you can watch how I do it when I'm not teaching somebody. Straight stitch first. Put it on a zigzag. Hand turn to see if you're on the zig or the zag. I'm on the zig. Do the zag, make sure it lands right on your road. Yes, we are ready to fly. <clears throat> Put it right at the tippy tip 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 of that point and turn. Now, if I was doing a satin stitch, I could still go that fast, but I would have to be much, much more careful at the points because it's going to show. This doesn't show. Isn't that awesome? No breakage. Oh my goodness, no coming unthreaded. This is awesome thread. Let me point out that every invisible thread is not awesome. Harry can see me turning again. I'm not stopping and moving. I'm just turning all at once. You can do this on your serger too. And here I come to the inside point. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to see if I'm on the end or that. That's the zig. I need to be on the zag. I'm going to move it. 
Cut my threads over here so they won't be in my way. My starting threads. And here we go. And there we go. Put it back on the straight stitch. One, two, three, four. Stop. Pull. Cut. And there we go. There's another one. Perfect. Perfect. No stabilizer on the back. Let me cut my, my tail here. Cut the tail off. There you go. with the tippy 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 tip of the point turn and make sure you're on zig and I'm on zig this one's kind of hard to see in this dark part but I'm guessing can you use your foot to line it up if you moved your needle over, you might be able to use the edge of the foot, but this is in the center. And so I'm just doing it by eye side. All right, we're coming to the any. And there we are. Now that was the zig. And so next is going to be the zag. And so I'm moving the zag to where the zig was, because that's where it needs to be. You'll figure it out. I mean, it's only two things you got to know, the zig and the zag. And then we're going to cut off the beginning the beginning invisible thread we can only see because it's all curled up like a snail and then we're going to do our single stitch and then we're going to pull it out see how fast isn't that wonderful it's like 30 hearts that must have taken you forever no <laughs> took me a lot longer to cut them out and figure out what piece of 10 inch square I wanted them on ta-da <laughs> the quilt top is done. It is not quilted yet, but it is done. I could not find in my stash a backing that I really liked, so I went on Amazon this morning and I ordered a pink 108 inch wide, three yards of a pink, because I want to have pink on the back of it. So I've got to wait until Friday for it to come. But I'm going to go ahead and get the top on the long arm and um, cut some batting out for it. And then just wait, and um, I'll have it finished before Valentine's Day. And between now and Valentine's Day, I can just look at it up here. <laughs> so I hope those of you who have asked me to show the scan and cut, and those of you who have asked me to show how I do my applique, the sewing machine part, I hope that I was able to teach you what you are wanting me to teach you. Um, I was going to try to do a heart with a dark color, and show you how to do a satin stitch, but I decided I'm not going to do that right now because I wasn't doing it that way for this quilt. So insofar as this quilt, you've already seen how I used the invisible thread and how I quilted all these hearts, lickety split, 30 of them. Yeah. So I think it's a darling, darling edit a sitar, although mine looks different than hers. I used two layer cakes for it. Both of them were edited. One of them was her Sweetheart collection and one of them was Braveheart, a really old collection of hers. And then some of it is just Joy Bernhardt's stash. And I put a border on mine. She did not. So, hope y'all like it. But uh, now, now, I'm going to get the kitty cat quilt out. Here it is right here. Kitty quilt. Kitty quilt. <laughs> I think I already showed you how I appliqued around a kitty cat. But just in case, I'll show you again because on the kitty cats, I used the satin stitch. On this, I just used a zigzag that wasn't really close together. Okay? There's a big difference there. <laughs> so, I'm going to say goodbye for this video, but I'll be back soon.